Greg Bishop covers the NFL for Sports Illustrated. And Monday morning quarterback, and he is a Syracuse grad, so immediately into the good graces uh, of my co-host here this morning. <laughs> Greg, Chris Honorado and Tom Goslowski with you here. Thanks for taking the time. Uh, and and Pete Iarizzo says hello. Oh, definitely. Appreciate you guys having me. A uh, big fan of Pete. Uh, we went to college together, so... Uh... I won't share any stories about him this morning. We'll save that for next time. <laughs> and uh, and we understand you're on you're on short sleep these days. Uh, so we appreciate you uh, you taking the time uh, with us here in Albany, New York. All right, let's start with the Giants because that is our biggest regional fan base, certainly. And at zero and three, Greg, I keep saying I'm not ready to bury this team because we saw flashes last week in Philadelphia. If they're able to carry some of that over to Tampa Bay to avoid an zero and four start, where are you on the Giants? Is this season salvageable? Yeah, you know I agree with you there. I think they're an zero and three team. Where if you look at how they played, uh, you get you have some room for optimism, especially when you look at you know Beckham hasn't been 100 percent healthy. Uh, he seemed to come back and play better last week. Uh, you know, obviously they've lost some games, and at times they've looked pretty bad on defense. But uh, I do think that if if you're looking at zero and three teams that like you're not going to watch anymore the rest of the season, I wouldn't put them in that category. In fact, I think that they you know they're in an interesting division where I think there's uh, a lot of teams that have played okay, but uh, could be. Uh, surpassed and so i would say that uh you know I, I wouldn't count them out quite yet tampa bay's defense last week got lit up by case keenum and stefan diggs is this the game where a brandon marshall odell beckham jr eli manning somebody has to step up big for the giants offense yeah absolutely and i you know i think if they don't have a good game this game it, it really speaks volumes to the fact that maybe the offense is just going to be out of sync all year uh, you look at brandon marshall he hasn't really contributed a ton yet but he's still you know a great player for a long time I'll be interested to see if, if he picks it up this week. And I think you saw uh, Shepard start to come on a little bit. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if a month from now we're talking about the Giants offense really sort of rolling and getting them into the mix where, you know, they're closing in on 500 and not out of the postseason race. Greg Bishop of Sports Illustrated and Monday morning quarterback with us here on 104.5, the team. Uh, Greg Jacksonville hangs 44 in London on a Ravens team. And then we see the Jets easily take care of the Dolphins. That's the matchup this week. Jaguars, Jets. Uh, could the Jets get to 500 here? I mean, I feel like Jacksonville may just kind of be an undulating team all season long, and we thought we knew what the Jets were, but do we really? You know, I think the most Jets thing ever would be if they happened to win like four or five games <laughs> this year, just enough so that they're not going to get Sam Darnold or one of the great quarterbacks coming out of that class. Uh, it seems to me like the Jets are perpetually picking between like 6th and 12th, and that that usually is the team that wins, you know, between four and six games or whatever, and so... Uh, they do look defensively a lot better than I thought, and they've been able to scrounge up some offense. I, I think Jermaine Kearse, uh has been a nice addition for them. And, yeah, I, I agree with you. I wouldn't be surprised if they beat the Jaguars this weekend. Uh, to me, Jacksonville is the team every year that we believe in and think is going to be on the cusp of something, and then they revert to playing uh, the way they played for so long. I, I did a piece with Jacksonville last August for the magazine that, uh, never ultimately ran because we bet that they would be a good team last year, and uh, ultimately they were not. So I think you've seen a lot of improvement there. I like what they're doing with Leonard Fournette. Uh, but to me, this that would be a toss-up game when you look at the weekend ahead. If the Jets get to 2-2, two and two, that could be made an argument that's the most surprising 2-2 two and two, or maybe that's the most surprising team in the NFL. But heading into Week 4, is there one team that preseason expectations for you, they've surpassed by a ton, and you're looking at this team thinking, wow, they got a chance in 2017. Yeah, you know, uh, I, I would say the Jets would fit there uh, from like a lower tier kind of deal because I wouldn't have been surprised looking at the team going into the year if they had gone, you know, 0-16 or 1-15 and, 16 or, or 1 and, 15 and here we are talking about them having a legitimate chance to improve to two and two this weekend. So uh, that would be one. Uh, you know, I think uh, the Chiefs. I thought they were a playoff team. I tab them as, as a team that would make the postseason, but uh, they they played, in my opinion, as well as any team in football, if not at the very top. And so, uh, to me, they they have exceeded my expectations in that they look like a team that's capable of winning the Super Bowl in February, and they're in a really tough division with the Raiders and the Broncos, but they may be the best team, uh, not just in the AFC West, but in all of football. Greg, if you're not parked in front of the TV watching the red zone, if you're going to, if you can pick one game to watch start to finish, uh, on Sunday, what would that game be? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of a big AFC West guy from back in the day. So I, I really like the uh, Raiders Broncos matchup. Uh, to me, I think that the Raiders performance against Washington last weekend was more of an aberration than anything that'll continue. 
I think they have great offensive uh, players, especially at the skill positions, and especially if Amari Cooper can start cutting down on those drops. And so I look at that, and it's a classic matchup of styles. You know, here you have a great offense, an emerging team, against a team that's played incredibly on defense throughout this season so far and already faced a ton of really good running backs. And so uh, strength against strength, the uh, Broncos have been the top team in that division for a while. So you're looking at the old versus new, and then you add in the fact that they're longtime rivals, that they don't like each other. And uh, to me, that's the game to watch this weekend. I'm on Tennessee Houston mainly because I was dumb enough to pick the Texans to get to the Super Bowl this year. So I'm keep trying to find ways to convince myself that that is still within the realm of possibility. Well, I'll help you a little there. So I think there's two things in play. Uh, one is I think no team defends the Patriots better than the Texans do. Uh, you look at the diamond defense they have. Uh, my colleague Andy Pinoy wrote a really interesting piece about why that's frustrating as a defense for the Patriots to play. I think you look at some of the guys they have on their defensive line, you know, uh, Merciless, uh, Clowney, J.J. Watt, uh, you know, they're stacked there. I think they'll be okay. And then I think last week was the first time where I watched Deshaun Watson and really felt like, hey, you know, I can see what they were talking about. I can see some flashes of the kid that was so amazing at Clemson in college. And I think last week was uh, sort of the week that he grew up and proved that he's going to be fine and play well in the NFL. And so uh, I, I don't know if I would make that bet, but I think that you can inch your way towards thinking it might come true. The Packers defeat the Bears last night, and even though Green Bay wins big, it's two Chicago Bears futures that we now have to wonder about, and the players on the team. Danny Trevathan, his hit on Devontae Adams, what do you expect from his suspension possibly on the way, and also Mitchell Trubisky, are we getting closer and closer to seeing him play this season? Yeah, I think uh, you should kind of expect both those things. Uh, I would be surprised if Trevathan doesn't uh, get a significant suspension. You know, you're looking, I think, at at least a couple games. Uh, the hit was fairly egregious, uh, you know, tough to watch, and it's something that the NFL has emphasized in recent years in terms of wanting to crack down on. Uh, to me, they make an example out of him and come down pretty strong here. Uh, second to that, I, I also think that given the way this bear season has gone, which is, you know, pretty much like we expected, they've, they've been competitive in some games, but it's, it's pretty clear, I think, that they're not a playoff team. And I think uh, given that, uh, you're looking at, uh, Trubisky had a great preseason. They obviously gave up a ton to go up and get him in the draft, and I think that you'll see him play sooner rather than later. Uh, I'll be really intrigued, actually, about a Bears game to see how he does, which I don't think we would be saying otherwise. All right, Greg, Gaz and I, neither of us have kids. What have you learned about fatherhood that you weren't expecting or nobody told you was going to be the case? <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, you know I've had a lot more fun than people make it out to be. Uh, you learn to survive on a four hours sleep or so a night. And uh, I also learned it's never too early to get him started about football. My son uh, turned a month old yesterday, and he's probably watched 30 games with me over the course of the last month while I was on paternity leave. So I don't think I'll let him play football when he gets older, but he'll definitely be a fan. And uh, he's already breaking down the 4-3 and the 3-4 and all that stuff. So uh, that's that's been pretty fun so far. I love it. Congratulations. You can find Greg on Twitter at Greg Bishop SI. And you can find the links to all of his work uh, on his Twitter feed, as well as what else goes on with Sports Illustrated and the Monday morning quarterback. Greg, really appreciate the time man, and uh, and for hanging out with us here in Albany, New York. Uh, thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. Tell Pete hi for me when you see him. We will for sure. That is Greg Bishop.